Well, let's get into it. Carl in the building. Where are you at today, sir? Lordsburg, Lord. New Mexico. On my on my way to Phoenix. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So introduce yourself to everybody and uh, let you and let everybody know what you was doing before trucking. <laughs> that was a long time ago. My name is Carl Coronado. Before trucking, I've been out here about thirty-two years, so I was a gardener. Mm. Yeah, Man, used to 30... mow, cut cut grass, cut grass. All right, so you, California. All right, so you was cutting grass, gardener, landscaper. Uh, yeah. What I mean, that industry, like, what made you get into trucking from there? Uh, back then they used to have commercials on TV. That, that was about like an 88. Mm -hmm. And I just seen the commercial. I never, I never been in a big truck. Never really seen the inside of one. Seen the commercial and went to driving school out in LA. Okay. So, yeah, so, so that's, what was, that's how I ended up there. So what was the, what was the atmosphere back then? Because like now, you know, you know, 30 years later, you know, we, we got all sorts of uh, advertising for trucking. We got trucking gurus. We got we got we got Facebook, Instagram. We got, you know, there there's not even no like how how poster boards of trucking companies that used to be up at these truck stops. That's that's not even up there no more. So you say actual trucking schools was 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 promoting through TV. Oh, yeah, they had a commercial driving school. Well, at, back then, it was called Debbie Dutson. Debbie, what? I went to a company called Commercial Driving School out in the city of industry, okay. California. Okay. So how much, how, how, uh, much, how much was schooling back then? I think it was uh, $1,000. What? But would they... What they did was they gave me a student government loan. Mm -hmm. So they actually gave me an extra 1500 to live on while I went to school for eight weeks. So I got a loan for 2500 Wow. So the school itself for eight weeks was a grand back then? Yep. Yep. And I, they, I also got $1,500 to live on. Wow. So it was what eight was, hours a day for two, for two weeks. So what was what was the schooling like back then compared to the schooling today? I don't know anything about the schooling today, but um, as far as I know, they didn't have any major companies with uh, schooling. You had to go to like a private one. Like back then, it was Debbie Dutton, but I went to a different one. Mm -hmm. It was just eight hours of classroom. I think for like the first week and then the second week we, you know, got to mess around in the cab over trucks mm -hmm. and, uh, there was like three of us in there and the instructor, we didn't, we didn't get too much hands-on driving to be honest. Wow. So, yeah. That's the way it was in the cab over. So the cab over, uh, number one, uh, number two, a manual number three, no air ride. How, how was it? Uh, how was it training <laughs> in in those in those type trucks, man? Um, as far as I remember, it was okay because that's all I knew at the time. So, yeah, it, it was fantastic for me. I mean, the first truck I I bought and I was actually in through a moving company was a cab over eighty nine International, little tiny sleeper. Wow. When it went all over the United States in that sucker. Wow, man, a cab over. You know, I you know I talked to a, a driver. Uh, I I haven't put that video out yet. I'm I'm still uh, trying to. Uh, actually, I gotta find it. But I talked to a driver that still drives a Kenworth cab over. I mean, he had a lot of he had a lot of um, you know upgrades to it since he had it. But uh, the main thing is no death. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, no death, straight fuel, um, and uh, you know, and of course, like you said, the the, the um, bunk area is like small as fuck. 
how 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 uncomfortable you guys were in those small in those small bumps back then. Well, I didn't know any difference, so I was very comfortable. I loved it. My brother he used to run with me, and uh, he'd either sleep in the trailer, mm-hmm. you know, or he'd put pads on each seat because we had the hump in the middle, mm-hmm. and he'd lay on the front seat across the front seat. Wow, man! And he'd this sleep is, there. This is crazy. <laughs> That's the way movers did it, though, because you know a lot of us had helpers with us. And they'd sleep in the trailer. Wow. So yeah, it was different back then. Man. So how so how was it? How how, how was it? Uh, you know, what it, it was just you and your brother, both of y'all. Both of y'all back then, was was it called uh CDL back then or was it called chauffeur's license? No, it was a class A. Oh, okay. So it was a, so it was called a class A chauffeur, uh class A license back then. Yeah, I, I believe uh, chauffeur was before me. Oh, okay, so I knew some guys that had actually had a chauffeur's license. They would talk about it, but I never seen it. We had class A's. Now you know, I talked to a, I, I talked to a young lady that was a recruiter for a moving company, and she was explaining to me about you know about everything that comes with uh, moving. But you you you've been doing you've been doing that. If I read your bio right, for like. What eighteen years, thirteen years? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I ran the road for eighteen years. And you and yeah. and you did you, you. What was how was it driving those type of trailers though? I mean, and don't don't those uh don't the moving trailers move kind of different than a than a regular drive-in trailer? Well, they're lower to the ground, but I don't think they uh, handle any different. Really, I mean. We had a double drop frame. It was it was low. We used to put our uh, ramps on the bottom, mm-hmm. but yeah, on handling it. Now them them was some huge trailers that you guys had to work work magic in in residential areas, man. What was some of the what was some of the toughest areas uh, driving those moving vans? Well, I used to go to D.C. a lot, oh, and I was God. like. It, 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 it snowed a lot one day, and we went down there. It was only like, it was a little residential area. Mm-hmm. Only there was snow on both sides. The cars were covered. The plows only made one lane. So it was tough getting in and out of there. And cold, it was miserable. Uh, now, being that you, being that you and your brother, uh, was you know was the uh, you know the 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 driver, and I guess he was the helper. Uh, yeah. How was how was it getting additional help? Like right now, is it's easy to get additional help now. All you got to do is go into a Facebook group or or send a shout out in a in in a, in a post or something like that, and then you get a handful of people that'll meet up with you and they'll help you. How was it? How was it trying to find help uh, movers? The you know back then. Um. It's probably the same way now. You could just call the destination agent or origin where you're picking up mm-hmm. and just say, I need three guys. And they'll meet you, you know, when you pick up your paperwork or whatever, you, or a destination, you pick them up at the agent on the other end. Mm-hmm. I need two guys. They'll be out there waiting. You pick them up and then you drop them off at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah, the agents find you, find you help. How was how was the pay for you guys back then? Because I'm assuming, I'm I'm going to assume that the additional pay that that you was paid, you had to use some of that money to 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 pay the help, right? Oh yeah, we paid. We were contractors, so we paid for our own fuel. Mm-hmm. We were owner operators, and uh, not everybody, but yeah, they they paid really well in the '80s. And then it's, uh, in the 90s, it started going down. There was a lot of competition. So, yeah, the prices were being dropped. And, yeah, it, that's why I got out of it, because the money wasn't as as good, I could say. But, yeah, I was there for a long time. The late 80s was really good. The early 90s was really good for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we used to get paid uh, 55% of the line haul. Wow. So, 
include it, it was it was pretty good including loading right did did you have did you guys have to load and i mean load the uh, load and pre- uh do the prep work well let me rephrase that do the prep work you know like covering all the all the furniture and then load the furniture up yep oh, okay so all got, that so you guys got paid any damages any damages we had to uh the driver or whatever, the con- main guy, the contractor, mm-hmm. you know, it comes out of his pay- out of his settlement through the insurance. You have to pay deductibles and yeah. Was there, so, you know, you had to take care of your crew. Was, was, did, did any of the guys that you brought on in your 18 years did any damage? Oh yeah. We all did damage. <laughs> 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 I mean, you can't, you hit walls. I mean, something, Break a leg on a chair while you're loading, you know, things mm-hmm. happen. What yeah, and what was the what was the biggest uh account or person that that you guys had to move? I moved uh well the only famous one I ever moved, he was a basketball player. He was getting transferred to the Phoenix Suns. Mm-hmm. I didn't know him at the time. Everybody else knew him. I don't know. I even forgot his name. It was a long time ago. Oh, okay. But uh, he wasn't he, he wasn't there, and he had an apartment. It was just – he had all his tennis shoes. He had a whole hallway full of empty shoe boxes all the way from the floor to the ceiling of <laughs> Nike. <laughs> wow. We, we just had to pick up – pack everything. And, you know, he had his clothes, and I tried on his jersey. He went down – I'm only 5'8". Mm-hmm. thing went down to my knees. Wow. <laughs> it was so long. <laughs> he was probably seven foot tall, you know, six eight or something. Man, it was long. All was right. Like, wow. So your so when I called you up, your 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 phone number shows you uh, shows an Arizona area code. So is that's where you from, Arizona? Yes. Born and yeah, right. I've been out here about eighteen. No, I'm from California. Oh, okay. So you moved from yeah. you 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 moved from one hot state to the other. <laughs> what was the <laughs> not that far from no. each other? <laughs> <laughs> I moved from a warm state or nice state, nice weather to hot weather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a big difference. It gets really hot. Now you know what I, I I think I think Arizona sits in between the equator because I. I was in I was in the area I went uh, I forget where I was at but I I went to uh, there was a casino up there nice casino by the way and it was hot as balls but in another part of town in another part of the area it was cold as fuck. <laughs> I think the only was, place it got cold is is Flagstaff. Flagstaff, you got yeah. hot as hell is Phoenix. Yeah, they're, that's they're, crazy. You know, they're, so they're it's a couple hours away. It's kind of crazy that 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 it sits on both sides of the equator. One side, one side of the state is hot as balls, and then over in Flagstaff somewhere, it's like zero degree. I mean, zero degrees and snowing. Like wow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. crazy. All right, so um, so you know, let's uh fast forward. You know, you you've been doing that for eighteen years. You got out of it. Um, you, 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 you jumped into, uh, you know, you jumped into another, uh, position. How, how was the transition from being, you know, being a mover to just, you know, to just being a regular driver? Um, well, one day I was just driving around. I seen this sign, Mm -hmm. you know, at Sealy Mattress Company and I applied. I didn't, I didn't know nothing about it. Got a job and just ran for them, and it was a great company. I was there for 14 years. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, th- so, see, so that's the mattress company, right? Yeah, they have a plant in Phoenix, and they build the mattresses there, and they load them up at night or during the day, and then we would come in in the morning and go from Phoenix up to El Paso, Southern California, or Arizona. We'd go right back the next day, so we were only gone overnight. And we go back out again. Now, you know what, uh, Carl? Man, you know, I, I really want your opinion on something. Like now, you know, companies is over here jockeying for position, trying to get drivers on, 
and you know some of these companies are over here talking like well we got to you know we just changed our pay schedule and all like that here you are with 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 18 years at one point another 14 with temper you know temper peated so you know 30 all together where do you think where where do you think drivers of your of of your stature should be making right now like per mile oh uh, it, it, it's hard to say i mean i'm happy where i'm where i'm at now mm -hmm. and i guess i'd be a lot happier if i made double the money per mile but <laughs> you know the competition it, it's all pretty much the same i mean i hear drivers they're, they're making big money it's like all companies they're all like making it pretty much the same pretty much so exactly yeah do you, it's all do about you, 55 cents do you do you mile, think 60 cents maybe. do do you think that's a um do you think that's um a disrespectful to the driver of your stature because i i talked to uh i, I talked to james lepratt shout out to james lepratt and he's a 45 year driver and when he came in to work for Stevens uh trans uh what was that? Not Stevens, I'm sorry, Smith. Uh Smith Transport, he came in at forty five cent a mile, bro. And he's like a forty year driver. But Yeah, yeah. <sighs> exactly. Well, it's like this, I mean we're not forced to be drivers. That's just what they're gonna pay. You could be an owner operator. They say they make more. I was an owner operator. I did okay. And then the rates started getting cut. So I'm a company driver. They all pay pretty much the same. I mean, yeah, I, I wish I could make more, but I'm okay. All my kids are all grown. I'm not married, so I'm doing fine. You know, That's I'm okay. Up. Now you, you you just mentioned you you was an owner operator for a little bit. How how long you was an owner operator for? Probably about sixteen years over there at uh, when I was a bed bugger, a mover. Oh okay okay. That's right. You did say that. Yeah. So, so um, man. So now you know you 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 left Tempur-Pedic and uh, you you know you you. You know, shout out to you for being a uh, channel supporter. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you're at Martin now. Uh, yes, I am. Is this now? There's two Martins. This this is the Martin, not the Martin Milk Company, right? This is Martin. Yeah, but when you did an interview on him, I was watching it. That's why. Yeah, I responded. <laughs> what, what? What? Now you you've been over there for almost ten months. What's What's your what's your experience with them? Uh it it well you uh did an interview with the recruiter. Mm -hmm. That was back in 2020 so a year ago. Mm -hmm. Um it's pretty much what he said. He's not lying. I mean a lot of recruiters will feed you stuff that isn't true. Mm -hmm. I listened to him and everything he said I got, you know. It's it's a it's a really good company. That's all I can say, pretty much. Except our minimum pay is, it's went up. It keeps on going up. So he said a thousand. It's not a thousand. All right. So about Martin, man, and you know you've been ten months in. Uh, you know, thirty year driver. Uh, how how did you get a how how did you get on with him? How how did you find out about him? I've seen their trucks many years ago didn't pay much attention to him, but I don't know. I just flipping through the internet and they were in Phoenix. So I gave him a call and obviously they liked my work history. They hired me right away. And I was like, well, this is going way too fast. I was just looking. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to go with them, gave him a, gave him a chance. I was ready to move on from Sealy. I was there just way too long and was getting same old thing for 14 years. I said, I got to do something else. I want to go over the road. So I hopped on with Martin and it's been good ever since. I mean, our minimum pay is good. Their equipment, they put me right in 
I started February 8th, 2021. Mm-hmm. They put me in a 2021 tractor. Okay. But it, it already had 100,000 miles on them because they'd get them in February. So they got it a year before that mm-hmm. in 2019. So when I got there, they already getting the, they already had 22s in, but, uh, yeah, they gave me a Cascadia. It's beautiful. It's, well, I mean, their maintenance program, they just, every time you go there, they check out your truck. They're always checking reefers in the, in the yard, temperatures and tires. They're on top of their game with uh, maintenance. All right. So, I, so I, I guess, uh, how you feel how you feel about working for the company is is real good you you haven't had no problems with your dispatcher or or the company as a whole no um actually i guess when you first get hired you get like a temporary dispatcher mine was nick mm-hmm. really cool guy i never met him but talked to him on the phone everything went well and then when i got onto a permanent route out like after about a month they gave me a, another dispatcher zach he was really cool and then that's when I was running the Northwest Regional. There was a lot of Washington, Utah, Oregon, all those cold. mountains. And I told them, I don't want to do mountains. <laughs> I don't want to do mountains. You, mountains know? And you can't cold. get no speed. I was only making minimum pay, $1,400 a week. Cause I, I could never get the miles going up and down mountains and waiting for, for shippers to get loaded and unloaded. So I, I told him, man, I think I'm going to get ready to quit. I want to, I don't like that run. So they called me within five minutes because I put in a two week notice. Mm-hmm. Carl, don't go anywhere. We have plenty of options here. I didn't know that. And he goes, what do you want to do? I go, well, I don't like the mountains. I can't get miles. I mean, I'm the minimum pay is great, but I don't, I don't feel right. Not working. I want to work. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I see here in the computer, you mentioned you had a son in San Antonio. I got to run from Phoenix to Texas back and forth. Oh. I go, hey, you put I me had on. mentioned it one time. <laughs> yeah. So I had mentioned it to my dispatcher one time. Hey, if you ever got to run to San Antonio, you know, I'd love to go. My son stays out there. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know he put it in the computer. This was like three months before that. And the guy tells me the the head boss, I don't know, dispatcher boss or whatever you want to call him. Mm-hmm. He's like, I see you got a son in San Antonio. We could send you there. <laughs> so I jumped on it. And now all I do is drive 500 miles a day. They they give you plenty of time on your run. Wow. Two days driving, and next morning you deliver. If you can't make it at Martin, I don't know. You've got to, something's wrong with you. They give you plenty of time. The pay's good. The dispatchers everybody i've met has been really nice it's like you can't make it there you're not gonna make it anywhere now call they don't pressure you now call 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 you you only been there now re re all respect due for you being 30 you know being a 30 year driver man but you've only been at the company for 10 months man i mean i mean you know you only been at the company for 10 months Get, give me some cons, man. What, what's the stressful part of, of, of working for Martin? Give give me some Driving stress. 65. Hey, there Driving we go. 65, and everybody passes me. Some people get mad at me because one guy told me, your truck only goes 64. And he got mad because he couldn't pass me. Mm-hmm. I go, why are you trying to pass me? Because your truck goes 65. So I slowed down and let him go in front of me and – the whole time I was behind him, you know, it, that, that's the most frustrating. I think prime does 63. Mm-hmm. So that's about the only one that goes slower than us. I mean, besides that, the money's on. I mean, they always pay you on time. I never had a pay issue. Mm-hmm. Um, I get home. You could, you have a lot of lanes that you could choose. I have a friend here that helped, that helped me out. I met him here. And he helped me out with the Qualcomm. I, I never seen a Qualcomm before, <laughs> so he helped me out. <laughs> you, we you, had people you that running, you, you running outlaw paper, and now all of a sudden you got to be like, "What is what what what, what is this electronic thingy? What what?" <laughs> well, no, we had a, a people net at Sealy. It, it's a different setup, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, he walked me through stuff. I'd call him. 
but see, he loves the mountains. He he runs I five. His name's Wayne. He goes California, Washington, Oregon, up and down the mountain. He was in snow yesterday, and for me, I don't like that. I told him you should go on Texas. It's nice. He goes, nah, I like it here. He, he's out. He does twelve and two. He does. He's out twelve days and he's home too. Yeah, me, I, 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 I can't do, I can't do snow because I'm already in the, I'm already in the Midwest, so I, I deal with snow, every, you know, all the time. But I can't deal with snow all the time, and then, and then the mountains, and then you got a chain, you know, you, you, you're in, you're in permanent chain states that you gotta have chains on the truck. If you don't, you yeah. you'll get a ticket, you know. And I'm like, man, I I don't want to be a part of that. Yo, send me down south. I'm good. I do Ohio to Florida, Ohio to Texas, and the occasional uh, Minnesota. I'm all right. You know, my my company got guys that goes on the other side of the map. They good. They happy. I'm I'm all right where I'm going. Yeah. So yeah, so Martin, man. Uh, now this is um, this is a, of course uh, reefer. So you know, you you doing a lot of, you know, you doing a lot of reefer loads, uh, a lot of crazy uh, pickup times and stuff like that. What what are some of the craziest uh, pickup times that you that that you encounter with Martin? Well, sometimes you have to go to like to a major grocery warehouse and you, you have to deliver like at two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the worst part about it is I, I've been at a shipper and I, it takes you eight hours to get it, get out of there by the time you're loaded, eight hours, seven hours, six hours, you know, on the run I'm on now. No. But when I was doing that regional, I, I was waiting a lot. That's another reason why I couldn't get miles. It took a long time to get loaded and unloaded. The miles we were like thousand mile runs, but you know, we well, the whole day getting loaded. Now, being that you guys is 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 waiting like crazy hours, what was the detention there? They 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 uh, they did offer detention and layover, right? Yeah, they did. I mean, it's not all that great. Like California, Martin doesn't pay a whole lot. For California detention, they, I don't know. They explained it something like, uh, I really don't know the reason why, but I've gotten for like three hours, like seven dollars. It's like really, damn. And then some places for three hours, you're going to get sixty bucks. California is the only one. I don't know why. Something something's going on in that state where they can't charge or something. I don't know. Damn, seven. I don't know the whole deal. Yeah, they don't pay much. Seven fifty for three hours. But you're not doing it. But you're not doing nothing but sleeping or watching TV. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's that's true too. But still, that's still, ugh, that's still ugly, man. Uh, do you um? Well, let me ask you this, uh, Martin. I mean, Martin. God damn it, Carl. <laughs> let me ask you this. You, you've been rocking out for for over thirty years, huh? How 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 many miles you got on your on your jacket, man? And how long did it take you to get there? I don't know. 30 years of driving, never been out of work, constantly had a job, never out of work. So you put it together. I don't know. So you, you would, could you, honest, <laughs> could you honestly say that you are, that you are a 3 million miler driver? Oh yeah. I have 30 years. I mean, I haven't, I've never been out of work ever. When I, when I came to Martin, I gave Sealy a two week notice. I left on Friday. I started Martin uh, orientation on Monday. That's and I'm how, back on the road on Wednesday. That's how you. Smooth, I've never been out of. That's how you smooth move from company to company. And by the sounds of it, it, it by the sounds of it, it only sounds like you only been, you you only been at three companies. The the moving uh, company, uh, Sealy, yeah. and now Martin. Right? Well, yeah, but when I first started, I had a year at J.B. Hunt. Oh, okay. Well, J well four. But that, yeah. That's impressive. Uh, yeah, I stayed there a year, and then I went. And um, so 
started, I got into moving. But yeah, I really haven't had too many jobs at all. But another thing about Martin, you don't drive in the snow. Mm-hmm. They'll let you know on your Qualcomm. There's a storm. The mountain mm-hmm. is going to be closing or snowing. Pull over. So you pull over and you get paid to sit. If it's too windy, they'll tell you you don't have to drive. Um, you don't chain up. You have chains. All the trucks have chains, but yeah. they don't want their equipment damaged. So you're not going to drive in snow. They're going to make. I, I had to wait a day out there by Cabbage in Pendleton, mm-hmm. and uh, they told me not to go. Uh, I just sat there and, and they'll watched pay, TV, and then and they'll, they'll pay you for it, of course. Yeah, they don't. They don't want you driving in the snow because it's not safe. Some guys like it. I have a couple friends that like it. They'll chain up and take off. Not at this company, but yeah, they love it. They'll go to Colorado all the time. Mm-mm, can't do it. Uh, I'm good. No. It's we're we're it's good a, on it's the It's an chain. adrenaline rush to them. <laughs> they love the excitement. But yeah, no, I don't like that. Carl, you 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 got an impressive track record, man. I, I definitely gotta commend you for that. Four uh four companies in, in thirty years. That's unheard of in today's uh in, in today's truck driving uh sphere. You know, you got you know, I talked to guys that f- freaking been at four five companies in the in the first year. <laughs> <laughs> it's know. not worth it. It's the same thing at every company pretty much. Wow. Every company I, I worked for they they treated me good. I mean, I don't bother people. It might be the the driver, you know. I don't bother people, so they don't bother me. So I, I understand it's not my company, so I can't make the laws here. So I, I do what they say or or leave. leave. Exactly. So with Martin, man, you, do you see yourself? Do you see yourself finally retiring from Martin? I'm thinking so. I have a. Uh, let me see. About eight or nine more years to go, and I get, I'll be sixty-seven. I'll probably quit. Okay, okay. So you, you, you definitely <laughs> gonna go in and uh, put it in, man. What I, I wish you, I, I wish you well, and I, uh, you know, maybe and, and you. let the good Lord get you there, man. Um, so yep. if any, if anybody's that's interested in coming into the, uh, into the company. Uh, do Martin offers? Do they offer a lease program there, or is it just straight straight company? It's straight company. On your interview that you had with 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 the gentleman, I forgot his name. Mm-hmm. He said that they were looking into it, but I haven't heard anything about it. All I know is they got a lot of uh, tractors, brand new ones, sitting in the yard waiting for drivers. I guess I don't know. So of course they twenty two. Get- of course, they got benefits. Uh, what, what, what benefits yes. that they offer you? Uh, well, I got me- I got everything: medical, dental, mm-hmm. vision. And my friend Wayne, he's like, "It's cheap here." I don't know. I've been paying the same. You know, I've been paying pretty much around the same for forever. Mm-hmm. But he, I think he came from Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. But he says, "Yeah, my other company, it was very expensive." The, the benefits here are really, really well priced. All right. I've always paid, so to me, they're 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 okay for me. He says they're it's a great deal. So, Carl, man, what 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 tips or advice would you give someone who is interested in Martin? Give them a call, and uh, you're not the boss. You don't know the company. Just do your job. I mean. If they want to run it this way, if they want to, some drivers say, I don't like fueling here. Well, you know what? They tell you where to fuel. They tell you where to go. You know, it's not your company. You can't, you you can't make the rules. You can't follow rules. You're not going to make it anywhere. Really? Any cameras in their trucks? Uh, yes. Facing forward only. All right. Now, ten yeah. months. Now you ten months deep with them. Did they did they offer you a sign on bonus when you came on? No, I. In fact, I didn't even ask them for one. It did. I, I wasn't worried about a sign on bonus. I, you know, I just came over. I didn't ask them. That, you know, I I just came over. But no, they didn't. They didn't give me one. 
All right, that's what's up, man. So Martin, well, I tell you what, bro. Uh, make sure you um, uh, uh, you know, make sure you email me your uh your your information. So that, you know, when somebody hear this interview, uh, you know, hear this conversation, I don't even call it interviews no more. I call it conversations because the best conversation okay. starts here on the Locked Out Man podcast show. That is what's up. Amen. Uh, Amen. <laughs> um, what you do is uh, send me your information. I'll put it in the uh, I'll put it in the description. So if anybody calls Martin. You know, they can use you for a reference and you can uh, probably get, you know, get a little bit of change out of it. I don't know. Possibly. Yeah. But I'll give you the information. If they, you know, if they want to talk to me, they could always ask me questions. No I'm doubt. Not lie to them. Hold, hold on for a second. Give me a second. All right. So before we get on up out of here, uh, you know, I guess, uh, I guess that one question that I was going to ask you wouldn't even, wouldn't, it, wouldn't even make sense because you was never fired from any companies. <laughs> you, 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 you was never fired. You, 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 nope, you smooth, never fired. You smooth, got your license, went in, got your experience. You, you was owner operator for for a little bit at a time. Then you, you know, you did JB Hunt. Uh, Seeley and now Martin. I mean, you again, bro. Like I said, you 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 definitely have an impressive uh track record, my man. Thank you. But let yeah, me I'm... but let me ask you this now. You know, you thirty years deep in the game. Why do you think that that us truck drivers don't get the respect that we deserve, man? I don't know. I can't answer that really. I honestly don't know. Um, I I guess I get respect to a certain extent, but you know we're we're, we're by ourselves. I mean, I got my little dog with me. Mm -hmm. That's about it. But yeah, I mean we're by ourselves, and people don't bother me. I don't bother them. I could care less if they respect me or not. That's what's you just got to find a good company that what you got to do is find a, a company that respects you mm. because they're going to be the closest thing to you. They're going to be feeding you. If good they don't point. respect you, good point. There's no sense in being there. Very good point. Yeah, so. All right. Well, my man, Carl, thank you very much for, you know, chopping it up with me on the Lockout Man podcast show Not a and problem. sharing your experience with uh, Martin. If you guys are interested in Martin, make sure you guys give, you know, Carl a call and uh, chop it up with him or use him for reference uh, when y'all look into uh, Martin Transport. Where are they located at? You, you they, they located out of Arizona, right? Well, my my terminal is Arizona. It's a it, it it's it's a decent size. They got a big one in Drupa Valley, mm -hmm. in California, which is by uh, Ontario. That's a pretty big one. They have local work there. I mean, if you want to be a local driver, they have local drivers there. <laughs> At my company in Phoenix, we don't have local. All but right. yeah. All right, well, that's what's up, bro. You are a citizen, so thank you very much, man. Uh, if you need to, you You're know, on, on or off the air, you got the number, just hit me up, man. And uh, I do. When, when I we, will. And when we get off, just make sure just email me all the, you know, all the information that one might need to, you know, to use for your, you know, use you for a reference. Okay, I'll do that. I'll send it to you. All right, bro, you take it easy. You have a good night. All right, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye.